Welcome back to CBS This Morning. It is back to school season, and our special series, School Matters, is looking at the national picture around schools and the coronavirus. But here's the thing about that national picture. The policies vary at the state and local level, sometimes dramatically. The U.S. has more than 13,000 public school districts, and i got to tell you, almost as many different plans for reopening. At least eight states are pushing back their start dates or going a step further and recommending that some schools remain closed, at least for now. Four other states ordered schools to provide some form of in-person instruction. But for the vast majority of the country, the plans vary not by state but by district, according to Education Week, which sampled hundreds of communities all across the country, including the 100 largest school districts in the U.S. You can see them right here. About a quarter of those districts are planning partial or full in-person reopenings, but nearly three-quarters of schools sampled, 73 percent, are planning remote learning only. And that is a complicated reality because remote learning is not an easy solution for everyone. There's a report out right now by Common Sense Media that estimates up to 16 million public school students lack either adequate internet access or computers. And of course, you need both if you want to facilitate remote learning. And by the way, the study also found that it's not just students. 10% of teachers fall into this category as well. Now, as you might expect, this is a matter of money, and so it disproportionately affects children in poor areas. For instance, look at Scarsdale, New York. That is one of the wealthiest school districts in all of America. 98% of households there have a computer and an Internet service connection that is adequate for remote learning. By contrast, one of the poorest districts, San Perlita, that's in Texas, just over half there have a computer and only 67% have an Internet connection adequate for remote learning. In other words, guys, one out of three students in that community do not have an Internet connection that allows them to learn remotely, at least not well. So when we talk about this national picture for schools reopening, it's really broken down a lot by not only the state level, but the district level, and then even beyond that, guys, the family level. Yeah, absolutely true. I know my wife experienced this when she was teaching um, earlier in the year through this from, you know, at, from home to kids yeah. at home. Every kid had a different circumstance. You know, some of them had computers, some of them had to use their parents' computers. Some of them were on their parents' iPhones. Every yep. time it was like individual instruction. Or Anthony, you have the computer and then you don't have Wi-Fi. Exactly. Which sort of defeats the purpose. That's why there's so many layers to this. Yeah. That's why it's so important to get the kids back, but it has to be done safely. In the meantime, Remote learning is just not as good as in-classroom learning. It just isn't. Nope, that's, that's the truth. All right, let's, all right, now let's see how students in one school district outside Dallas are returning to in-person learning. Wiley East High School has more than 2,100 students enrolled. As Mireya Villarreal shows us, nearly 60% decided to return for in-person learning. Wiley ISD is one of the few districts here in North Texas that decided to start the year with both in-person and virtual learning at the same time. So we also got to look inside Wiley East High School. From the moment that you walk in here, you can see that there are signs everywhere reminding students and staff to stay at a distance and also wear their masks because it is a requirement here in Texas. There are also, of course, hand sanitizing stations everywhere. Here in the cafeteria, there are green dots on the seats to remind students to sit at a distance, and tables are also staggered. Every night, the bathrooms and high-touch surfaces are sanitized. Also, teachers were given these emergency care bags where they have supplies like masks, gloves, and also uh, sanitizing liquid if they need something in an instant inside their classroom. Parents and students say they feel safe and they realize there's only so much the district can do. Many believe that the benefits of in-person learning far outweigh the risk. For CBS This Morning, Mireya Villarreal in Wiley, Texas.